Today on The Breakfast, the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria rejects a bill seeking to make it mandatory for fresh medical graduates to provide services to Nigeria for up to five years before receiving full registration and license to practice. Also on The Breakfast, report says unabated killings by suspected headers in Benue State leaves no fewer than 400 dead in three weeks. We'll talk about security situation in Benue State. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. Happy holiday. It's a happy Easter Monday. And that's what it is. I hope you had a fantastic uh, celebration. And do not forget the reason for the season. But as always, we probably would have started with the top trending. Since here, apologies for starting off a little bit behind schedule. We're just delving to a uh, paper review this morning where we have Openabo Nkotaria, who joins us via Zoom this morning. Nkotaria, good morning and thank you for joining us. Happy holiday. Doesn't feel like a holiday for you and I. Good morning, Messi, and uh, good morning, Nigerians. Well, happy Easter. Yes, it's happy Easter. Easter. Uh, let's take a quick look at the papers. Uh, we'll start off with the Punch now, and uh, looking at the Punch newspaper, there's a lot of exciting stories. The Punch says, fuel subsidy removal, marketers seek CBN loans for 30,000 gas stations. That's uh, what the punch says. Gas station to cushion subsidy removal effect as PMS may sell for 750 naira per liter. NARTO wants to end subsidy and LC to meet incoming government over subsidy removal. I, I think it's a conversation that everyone should sit on the desk and have. Uh, June is almost here, you know, so you have May, June, very close. And uh, <laughs> all right. Asset declaration defaulters may be removed from office. This is uh, what you find on the punch. And can governors others preach love at Easter? So it's one thing to say, hey, you need to love one another, but are you practicing what you're preaching? Yes. Buhari, Vice President, Yemi Osiba Joe. MBA Mon X I C G George Ajibola, that's uh, another one. May he so rest in peace. And Bishop demands justice for 41 or attack victims as church reopens. Then again, band is slash ransom for 85 Zamfara abductees. Federal state lawmakers to get 49 billionaire. Uh, federal government bars online banks from accessing customers' photos and contacts. I mean, there's a lot of drama that just probably might be going on in the entire space. We'll move away from that then. we look at the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian says, the United Kingdom revise or reviews foreign health workers recruitment and returns to Nigeria to red list countries. Okay. So, outage over bill mandating five yeah, pre-licensed practice for Nigeria trained doctors. Uh, Bill poorly research reels out uh, inaccurate figures. Federal government brain drain committee reports not implemented. Group inactive for months. If Bill becomes a law, government officials should stop medical tourism. That's uh, also another conversation that you have there. And then still looking at the Guardian newspaper, there's also a report saying Coca tax Nigerians next government on nation building and uh, how Agbero multiplied dues spike transportation costs by 25% is an editorial. You should read it and we're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, the size of the conversation on the Guardian newspaper. We'll just move away from that. Then we have the Nigerian Tribune. On the Nigerian Tribune this morning, uh, NAS... Pending offices, APC governors may open talks with aspirants. Gang up against Southeast thickens and group cautions not in contestants and PDP eyes NAS uh, presiding officers post. Ten months after, our church reopens amid tight security. And you can see a lot of persons who are on wheelchair there. Uh, banks network failure, fraudsters target customers, uh, 
migrating to digital payment wallets. Then you also find uh, traffic cures, looms as trucks, beseech lucky port for cargoes. <laughs> we have talked about these over time. Uh, absence of holding bay, worrisome. This is what tractors are saying, electronic call-up coming soon. That's what the MP is also saying, Coca to Buhari. I don't know whether you are fulfilled as president. And then we have the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. The Daily Sun says, Coca to Supreme Court, don't disappoint Nigerians. Thanks, Buhari, Tunubu on unity and corruption. You have fought a good fight. Keep dreams alive. Priest urges Nigerians, a day of blood, sorrow in Lagos and Enugu. Then you have gunmen kill, please injure orders in Lagos. 15, burned to death in Enugu highway crash. 10th National Assembly group endorses Carlo for Senate president. And then the conversation can never end. Uh, Cardinal knocks CBN over now redesign. Don't allow economic political situation weigh down your fate in God. Uh, in God, Bishop enjoins Nigerian and totally inflows to investors. Exporters window heat 1.49 billion in March and Buhari Governor Skuka. Federal, Gov Federal Executive Council orders Monday ex-Justice Minister uh, G. Bola, who died at uh, the age of 89. Uh, well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. Open up, Kateri, are you here with us now? I've always been with you. Okay, then. Sounds like Jesus saying that to his disciple. I've always been with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then let's go ahead, then. Uh, what are your thoughts on the papers this morning? Looking at uh, the Punch newspaper, fuel subsidy removal. Marketers are seeking the Central Bank of Nigeria's loan for 30,000 gas stations. And this has to do with, you know, plans of trying to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy and what the price of petrol might actually be, 750 naira per litre. That's what top quotas are saying, 800 naira uh, per litre. What do you make of this movement? And do you think that other parts of the country, uh, organisation, businesses, people should begin to think ahead and, you know, find a way to just make plans for all of the effects of this? Well, when you talk of the effect of uh, the role of soft CD, there is no other plan you can make because um, except you have the likes of the Dangote refinery when it starts working because it starts subjected to open to the vagaries of the market. You know? uh, well, now the federal government needs to subsidize it. Don't forget that before now, the federal government had said that uh, the subsidy was a fraud. We expected, they said they were, there was nothing like subsidy, not that they were going to even remove subsidy. Said there was not like subsidy. It was only a decoy by past administrations to defraud the uh, country. They came on board and continued with the subsidy and said, yes, there is actually subsidy. For eight solid years, Buhari did not bother about the removal of subsidy. Rather, he's transferring the responsibility to his successor so that he doesn't take any blame, trying to extricate himself from the hardship the subsidy was going to bring. And um, if you talk of the remedy, like you just asked, what or what are the consequences of the removal of subsidy? Of course, when you say you remove subsidy, then it's no longer regulated by the government. That is what it means. So it will be subjected to the visitors, the vagaries of uh, market forces. And so the marketers and so on, explorers and so on, are going to determine the price of petrol, diesel, and um, um, kerosene. They are going to determine the price of those things per liter. And you should expect um, a rise when such things happen. You know, it becomes a capitalist society. And so some might sell at a particular price, others might sell at another price, or they might come together, form the union that they've always, uh, as they've always done, and come up with one price. But definitely, the price are going to be astronomical, whether we like it or not. I see petrol selling for as much as a thousand naira at the end of this year. And so Nigerians are going to be worse hit. Now, if you talk of the alternative, the alternative is gas. But the truth is that we actually utilize our gas. Don't forget that some years back, the world has always talked about the transition from petrol 
to gas. But in Nigeria, have we really transited? Are we even prepared to transit from petrol to gas? That is the question. Because we have leaders that are full of mouth that with high blood pressure of the certain rhetoric, you know, they come on there, they mouth all kinds of irrelevant bias relevance, and at the end of the day, nothing is done. You have an enemy of this. And have we, because we have enough gas in this country, more than enough gas. But because we have leadership that is foresighted or leadership that is not even sighted at all, they are waiting for when the whole world will now transmit to gas, that we might probably be about the last or second to the last or third to the last transit. Otherwise, ordinarily, we shouldn't be talking about petrol anymore. But be that as it may, I can tell you that at the end of the year, I can see um, pump price, a liter of petrol going for as much as a thousand naira. And that is because the federal government will hands off completely. And it's to a, to a large extent, I can also tell you that the subsidy is a scam, it's a fraud. Because you have the cartel that are in charge. Look at what happened recently fuel scarcity, and look at how much we bought. Some of us bought for as much as 800 naira per liter. Just within that short period, 800 naira per liter. So what do you expect when there is no longer regulation, federal government regulation? It will go up to 1,000. By end of next year, we shall be talking about 2,000, 1,000, 5,000 pounds. Because these are capitalists that are in that business to make money. Profit making is the primary motive for getting into that uh, petroleum business. So definitely by next year, we should be buying petrol for 1,500 to 2,000 naira per liter. These are going to be the consequences of the subsidy removal. Because you can see the marketers are agitated. They really want to increase these prices, but because of the so-called subsidy, because the federal government is subsidizing the uh, sale of this petrol. Example, so some saving in the north, they have different prices for uh, the petrol. The, and that the prices in the north are quite different from the prices in the south. Well, I, I cannot uh, ascertain the veracity of that. But talking of the consequences, of course, Nigerians are going to be hard hit. We are going to be buying petrol for 1,000 at the end of this year and at least 1,500 naira by next year. Mm. But uh, there's also another uh, header this morning on the punch. Can governors orders preach love at Easter? I'd like to ask you. Why is it that, you know, we can be described as a country where religion is big? So you have Christianity, you have Islam, and then you have those who are traditionalists because you can't ignore them and those who, who believe in all this stuff. And then if you look at, if you want to juxtapose uh, the level of crime and clim criminality, it's not in connection with love that all of this religion and beliefs actually practice. What exactly is going on? You remember, um, who was that? Barry White. Barry White. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Barry White, practice what you preach. You're telling me this, you're telling me that. You know that song very well. Yes, that depicts the Nigerian situation. If today there is what you call rapture, if today God decides to say it's judgment day, Nigeria will be likened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because God will ask, show me one innocent man and I will save the nation. I don't, you see, uh, most of these pastors, I'm very sorry to say. No, but why are you starting pastors, with pastors? You say one innocent man. It could have been you. I want to use you. that as an example. Uh, I mean, I'm not just pastors. using... Let's, so, let's start with the traditional. Let's start with them. If you want me to start with them. Should we start? Can you hear me? You can also be one person that could save the country or the world. No, I don't, no, no, we talked of churches. We, we, no, you talked of religion. You talked of the traditionalists. You talked of the uh, Muslims. Muslims. You talked of the Christians. And then and love the Christians. is far away ah, from us if you, you look you, at our behavior. That's what I want to tell you now. Don't worry now. Don't, don't worry. Let's just calm down. This applies to all. What I'm going to say about the pastor now, it applies to all. None is exonerated. But because we don't have time, I cannot go into Muslims, clerics, and all this. So it applies to all. Most of them are criminals. Those are the ones Jesus says, still in the name of the Lord, and they flogged out. 
most of them are into that business simply because one, you don't pay tax, and two, it's another avenue to siphon money. You cannot go and tell the church to come and prove how he got the 20 million naira on a Sunday. It depends on his congregation. So most of them use that to siphon money. So it is business. Even the traditionalists, you go to them, these days you go to them, seek, invoke their assistance and nothing happens. The same thing with the Muslim clerics. So they are, not, they, are not, they are not actually called by God to serve. That's the point I'm making. They are businessmen. I always tell people, I say, Christ on earth never had a church. I'm using him as an example now. Never had a church. He healed as he walked. There was nothing like you didn't have faith, therefore you, are, you cannot be healed. There was nobody with infirmity that came across Christ that was not healed. Even when the demons in him rebuked Christ, Christ commanded them. Now you see pastors. They are, you have cripples in their churches. They cannot heal those ones. Yet they tell you they have healed the other ones outside, faces you don't know. But the ones in their churches, they cannot heal. They have not gone to hospitals for the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk. We've not seen all those things. They've devised a new means now. What is the new means? You have cancer in your system. Be healed. Be healed. Then the next thing, they come up with a doctor's blood. That one has been healed. Can go to the hospital and heal a cancer patient that is uh, at stage four. You cannot see. So they are just businessmen. And that is why you hear everything. Okay, every day, churches are springing up. They make all their own money. But the truth is, they've not been called. So they don't have the powers. They don't have what it takes to ensure sanity in the society. In fact, they are part of the person's disgrace in watching the situation in this country. Because they are like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It cuts across all but they, they were they, they were, that's what the point I made. They are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So in situation, and Jesus was angry with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was bitter. Even those that went to church, he flogged them out. So how can you expect us to be religious? And be, uh, behave like Christ or behave like uh, Prophet Muhammad? Or did Muhammad order these people to like, did Muhammad approve of uh, people like the Book of Haram and all these characters? Yes, they are killing in the name of Muhammad. Go to the traditional setting. Those good old days, in the days of but, our uh, Open a bank guitar, so if I, you approach I, a shrine, I mean... if you approach a shrine, it works. And it works for them. You so, can approach the shrine. The patient doctor will take your money and disappear. So I think that you have, um, you know, based your answers to the part where you have the priest in each of this religion practicing and what is obtaining. Yes, uh, that's what but I mean. But my, yes. my, my concern is about the tenet of this religion. If you look at Christianity, the tenet of Christianity is love. If you also look at Islam, Love is also it. I can't categorically say what it is for the traditional. No, but but I, I won't say now. anything see, different. So for me, it's not about those who are leading, but I'm saying that those who believe in it, the behavior and the practice over time has constituted no, no, because no, 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 just allow me land with this one now. Yeah. If you look at the, yeah. the way how toxic our society is and how the entire governing space is and even the elections that we have just finished and even the fact that you have issues brewing after the election, you ask yourself, who exactly are these people? They are Christians, they are Muslims, they are traditionalists and their actions and behavior. Can we correlate? Can we connect them to the tenets of what they believe? How come um, those, because if, if you look at the people who snatch the ballot boxes, I don't think they're spirits from different planets. They're people who are professing either they are Muslims or Christians or traditionalists and whatever it is that they're believing. And all of these tenets of religion or whatever it is, if you look at them really, love is, you know, the ultimate thing. And so how come, you know, the world is so chaotic? We are just so 
Um, there's a lot of wickedness everywhere. People are dying. You know, people Monday. are just, I mean, there's so much that's going Monday. on that you can't phantom. So it's Easter. And of course, for the Christian religion, it's a time to talk about love and everyone is preaching it. And so my question is, why is there no connection with what people profess and what they practice in terms of manifestation of what we I'm see in policy mercy. and every other thing, not just mercy. limited to, you know, the priest in charge, but everyone, even, including even, you and I. Even, no, we, we use the priest because they are supposed to serve as role models. i get my point. Yeah? We use the priest because they are supposed to serve as role models. But don't also forget that Christ himself said, not all that say, Lord, Lord, shall get into the kingdom. It's not as if you don't have Christians, good ones. It's not as if you don't have Muslims, it's good ones. It's not as if you don't even have the traditionalists, like you say, good ones. But not all. The Sadducees and Pharisees, they were calling God and calling all kinds of people. They believed in God. But the truth is, was it from their heart? And that's why I said, it is not what comes out of you that defiles, what goes inside, but what comes out of you. He's talking of your mind. So, definitely, you're going to have everybody calling God. Okay, look at you want to go to church in the morning. As you get to the church, before you leave your house, you're quarreling with somebody. You get to church, you get up, this machine, move, 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 in church. Then, in church, you keep quiet. Immediately after service, you, you, you resume the quarrel. That's the kind of society we live in. So it's an individual race. That is, it's an individual race. But unfortunately, the bad ones outnumber the good ones. Or that you still have good ones. But the bad ones outnumber the good ones. And it has always been like that. Even before the coming of Christ, even while Christ was on earth and after Christ, he came for the sinners. He didn't come for the righteous. And the sinners were bound. You see, in every situation, the bad thing will outdistance the good one. That is human nature for you. So there is nothing we can do about it. And so it will be until Jesus will come, the judgment day. He cannot change. The number of churches will not change because the, church, the churches, the pastors and the of, of Jerobasias are businessmen. That's the point I'm making. They are businessmen. All they go to most churches now, they preach prosperity, prosperity. In fact, in most cases, they misinterpret the Bible. They interpret the Bible to suit themselves. To see how much money will come, they, they are more interested in the congregation because the more they know the, the, the number, the, more, the richer you become. And unfortunately, their followers have also been misled. But it's an individual race. That's what I keep telling people. Because even if you die with your son, with your father, with your wife, with your husband, you will be judged differently by God. For those of us that are Christian, you'll be judged differently by God. So, my dear, we shouldn't even bother about that. But even apart from that, for you to redeem your moral life, you must not even be a Christian, a Muslim, or a traditionalist. You mustn't. You can have an atheist that is very, 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 very civil. It has to be with your conscience. You mustn't be a Christian. You mustn't be a Muslim. Everyone, we all know what is good and what is bad. Prevent what is bad and do what is good. You must be a Christian, you must be a Muslim. So it really has nothing to do with the churches to say this. No, 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 it's an individual thing. It's an individual race, like uh, the born again, we call it individual race. Uh, Panabang Katara, uh, this is also a very strong one. The United Kingdom has actually reviewed the foreign health workers uh, recruitment process and however according to the front line or the front page of the guardian newspaper nigeria has been returned to red list countries and at the time countries that are on the red list are not supposed to be hired even though there were reports in 2022 that you know the uk was still hiring from red list countries i'd like to share your thoughts you know on this particular one especially if you juxtapose that with the jackpa syndrome and also, you know, the, the fact that you have medical brains moving here and there. Well, it is unfortunate. It is, it's a sad development, I must say that. Um, because when you consider the working conditions of our doctors here, most of them, when they travel out, they excel. In, in, they excel in, in their various uh, clinics and hospitals and what have you. So it is quite sad. It's been a disadvantageous to the doctors 
Unfortunately, in this country, even if you look at the bill, recent bill where they said, it, I mean, uh, every new medical practitioner will have to wait for five days. That's ridiculous as it is. You know, I mean, there cannot be a crueler tyranny than that perpetrated under the shield of the law. You're trying to, I'm, I'm twisted. You want them to remain here. You know what? They, 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 they are working in the environment. There is no, the, the condition is not conducive. Now, back to your question. The British government probably has a reason for that. I, I don't also want to think it has to do with all this Ikuremadu's uh, matter and so on, because I understand it was in Nigeria. So, nevertheless, they have a reason. I don't have not read that story, and I cannot, for, for now, I mean, speak on the reason. But our doctors have performed credited, so I can't really fathom why the British government would want to uh, put Nigeria on the red list and prevent, prevent them from moving over to the court. Because from what we've got, if, for example, you're a medical doctor and you perform additionally, you cannot defend your certificate, you're not worth your audience. Of course, that should be on an individual basis. But for you to do a blanket one, I am surprised. But most medical doctors, even if you travel out, before you have been employed, of course, there has to be some level of examinations you have to pass. So I don't think it should be a blanket thing. But I don't have the details when it comes to that. I don't have the details. That's, 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 that's it about that. No, so, so, so looking at that, uh, just as we move on uh, from the paper review this morning, uh, you have uh, APC governors may open talks with aspirants. Uh, the problem might just be a lot of back and forth with all of that. I'd like to share your thoughts on it. Sorry, the APC governors may open talks with aspirants. Yes. NAS presiding officers, <laughs> APC uh, governors, uh, that's on the Nigerian Tribune, by the way. Yes. Oh, it, I mean, it's a normal thing. I mean, that the elections are, are nearly, the elections are over, the litigations are on. Um, you know, definitely there are group parties, even though they belong to the same political party, but there are group presidents, and probably they want a situation where they'll smoothen out the rats. And don't also forget that um, positions, people will be just me for positions and so on. So basically, I think, I mean, conflict is a function of interaction. Man cannot not come to field. But the whole essence, the most important thing is resolution of the dispute, you know, for so the conflict. So I think that is what they are working on right now to see how they can have a united party, you know, and uh, Based on that, we could have appointments, they could compensate you with appointments, because definitely a lot of aspirants would have been agreed. We are not talking about candidates now, you're talking about aspirants. A lot of them probably would have been agreed, you know, and most of them would have been threatened to maybe leave the party or something. So it is important for them to uh, judge or with a view to resolving whatever the issues are, and most of them will be compensated with uh, appointments and so on. I mean, it's normal. I mean, it's normal for people to to discuss in, 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 in the world. It's quite normal. But the important thing is the outcome of that discussion. That is what's important. So it's, it's, okay. it's okay. Well, then, uh, how, how would you also react to this particular one? The fact that uh, the National Assembly tent, National Assembly groups are actually endorsing, or a group is endorsing Kalu for Ojuzo Kalu for Senate president. The conversation is that, oh, we should get to the South. And then we're saying, if we look at the on- <laughs> they call it, uh, it's not a gentleman's agreement, an agreement that is not constitutional. If the entire polity was unable to respect that, that it should have been the turn of the South, uh, precisely people have said it should be the turn of the Southeast, especially when you have the rotation going to the Southwest and, uh, you know, the North at large, then it should have gone to, you know, the Southeast. If that has not been respected, even at political party levels, what is the guarantee? What's the effect of having these groups endorsing uh, Senate president? And even the Senate, I mean, uh, Audrey Zokalu already putting out the argument for him wanting to become the Senate president. Is there any, you know, uh, logical reasoning or backing to that argument? Oh, yes. Um, you see, the presidency, uh, when you consider the office of the presidency, uh, most people might not want to gamble that. Even if they make you the vice president, they make you the senate president, they make you the speaker or deputy speaker of the National Assembly, 
your powers cannot be compared to that of the president. And so it could come as compensatory. What a lot of persons fight for is the presidential ticket to get the president. Every other thing is second, including the vice presidential ticket is second. Like most people will say it's a spare tire. You know, well, it has some constitutional powers recently. But then, um, I'm not going to talk about audios of Cali. I'm not going to speak on his competence. But I think since the vice, the president is from the southeast, the vice president is from the north, the Senate should come from the east. Because they have to be compensated. They have been so marginalized. You know, there's this level of discrimination. I call it um, uh, manacle segregation and change discrimination against the Southeast. So the Senate president should go to the South. I'm not saying he should go to Uzokai. That's what I'm saying. I, I cannot vouch for his, his, his integrity as a governor. I, I mean, I, I just can't. And I hope there is somebody else. Nevertheless, we are talking about the zone now. We should go to the southeast so that you can start pacifying. You can start the healing process. Oh, yes. We did not get the presidency. We are leaving out whatever it is. But at least the southeast, we have the Senate president. It could compensate, it could pacify them, it could heal the broken and ruptured landscape. Because the, the people are really agree, and I am in support of them. And that is what is responsible for the agitations in the South. So let the Senate president, the Senate, the Senate president is no small man in any way. In America, the Speaker of the House is, is almost as powerful as the president of the country. So let this office of senior president go to the south. At least it will make them happy to be very largest. Because the senior president is number three man in the country. That's my take on the issue of zoning. But, but you know... I'm not saying I, it's Maduro's or Carlo. I mean, uh, yes. I'm just saying that let's be very, you know, rational with how things have panned out. We have made several excuses. We have given reason why that agreement that was made when you and I were not even present. I'm not sure, maybe you were there at the time, but not physically present. I to wasn't this, there. Uh, you I know, wasn't there. being consulted to have this sort of agreement. The point is, it has not been respected to any point. And then again, what's the rationale? Because it feels like at this point we're throwing, you know, the argument as to who, who is... Uh, very qualified. We, we don't really need to think about where you're from, whether you're from a certain ethnic religion. And we have also no, this... No, 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 no. No, uh, uh, Kataria, you know that over yes. time, we have also made it look like religion and ethnicity has not influenced our polity. Meanwhile, that has always influenced, you know, who becomes the president or whatever it is in this country. But on the other hand, you're, you know, so right. far, Absolutely. we have ignored it. We're making it look like, oh, it's not the point. It's not supposed to be a conversation, but this is who we are. Th that's what it is. And that has become. So why are we even talking about this one? We didn't even pay attention to the previous conversation that has been going on, even in various policies. For instance, uh, a party is, uh, you know, the PDP, the APC, the, Chris, uh, the Muslim Muslim ticket, and then, you know, not having it zoned to the Southwest, or so, I beg your pardon, the Southeast, in the PDP. These are the conversation. And then again, uh, why should we be talking about who cares whether it goes to a certain region or not? As long as you have uh, um, a Senate president should... Or Jules Okalu be bothered about whether it comes to him, he goes to the East. Was he part of the entire conversation for zoning and not zoning? Open up, I'm sure that, uh, can you hear us? Yes, I just heard you. You, you went off, yes, you went off for about a second. So I really don't know where you heard me from, but... Uh, no, 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 it's okay. At least I, I, I can comprehend what you said. Go ahead then. Okay. Now, you see, the truth is, the major, the bane of our politics has to do with is, um, a lot of people that are egocentric. You know, it, it, they don't believe in the thought that they, they, they argue and forget zone when they think it's going to be in their favor. When it's not in their favor, they try to discard it. That's the problem we have in this country. 
and it's a lack of ideology. Now, if you suck up, the elections are gone, no doubt. We were against, a lot of us were against um, Muslim Muslim tickets. And you'll be living in self denial if you think that uh, these things are not important. They are, but the truth about it is that we always look for a way to circumvent. Now, the issue of the Muslim Muslim ticket, yes, they've, they've given them the ticket, they, they've declared them the winners, but I have a conviction that if we had a free, fair, credible, and transparent election, and if INEC had not compromised, definitely they won't have won that election. That's the truth about it. If, it, if, if the sentiments of the people, if they won't have won that election. Then secondly, on the issue of the South, a lot of people said it should come to the South in the last presidential election. It should come to the South. Now, a lot of these leaders who said it should come to the South, they are mischievous. Their thinking was that when it comes to the South, then they will, it might come to the South-South, because it's South. So it might come to the South-South. None of them wanted it to go to the southeast. They frustrated P2B. None wanted it to go to the southeast. They thought they were going to use their gravitas to ensure that it was in the south south. And when that did not work, they now said, "Oh, even southwest is south. Let it go to the south southwest." You see, so it's all about interest. It's a politics is a consensus circle of uh, conspiracies and articulated interests. So it's all about interest. It's not about the nation. It's not about uh, the policy. It's not about any region. That's the truth about it. So we advocate, we shout, we should go to this place. But those, the gladiators, have different uh, 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 agenda. They just use you. They brainwash you, use you, you follow them. But they have a different agenda. And that is why we are where we are today. So, yes, we all agree. We all recognize what the fault lines are. We all agree that, yes, if we have to talk of a unified nation, this is the way to go. But then interest comes in. Selfish interest comes in. A lot of, a lot of these leaders are not altruistic. They don't look at the bigger picture of a one united Nigeria. No. It's, even the see, president elect said, it is my turn. He did not even say it's the turn of the Southwest. My turn. I did this for Buari. I did this for Buari. It is now... I've made leaders. It is now my turn. It's, you can see that it's all about selfish, selfishness. It's not about national unity. And that has always been the drive. So they are prepared to truncate any process that will ensure unity, if that process is adverse to their own interests. Well, we, we have to go we now. where we are today. Mm. Open the ball. Yes, okay. We have to go now uh, for the want of time. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show that's on the breakfast. We appreciate Thank your you, time. Mercy. Thank you, Messi. And happy Easter once more. Thank you so much. Have a happy holiday and happy holiday to you right there. And I hope you're having a great time already this morning. Just sit back, we'll return with more interesting conversation now. We'll be looking at the conversation as to brain drain and the resistance, of course, from the Medical Dental Association rejecting the proposed, you know, service year for doctors. When we return, please stay with us. <laughs>